Welcome to our program. When the first plane took off in a Fairbanks ball field, it opened up a new frontier for Alaska. Fast forward to today. The FAA says Alaska has about 8,000 pilots, about six times more per capita than any other state. And with very few roads to connect such a vast state, the need for pilots will only continue to grow. As the planes come and go at Merrill Field, you'll find students right next door at the University of Alaska Anchorage's Aviation Technology School. All right, flaps are up. Take off briefing. Students like Glenn Gustafson. His instructor is Jim Moss. Why don't we continue climb right on up to 2,000 feet? Jim's job, to make sure safety routines get absorbed into Glenn's muscle memory. We're going to be headed down to Birch with a bag, 2 0 Papa. 2 0 Papa, Roger. Glenn learned to fly at West High. Glenn is quite a ways along. He earned his private certificate. Now he's working on the next step. That's an instrument rating. And that is part of the path leading to a commercial pilot certificate. Here we have the runway in sight. We're a little bit to the right. A big part of that path, time in flight simulators. This is exactly what you'd be seeing from the pilot seat when you're coming in to land. And then we've got touchdown and we're pulling power back. The aviation bug bit Glenn when he was a small kid on plane trips to his family's commercial fishing operations in Bristol Bay. To get out there, we had to fly you know, through Lake Clark Pass because there were no roads. It was this view that inspired Glenn to become a pilot, just like his dad. I just really enjoyed flying through the pass, seeing the glaciers, and uh, just getting out and being able to go you know, wherever you want. Lake Clark Pass, an enjoyable route to fly on a beautiful day, but the fog can move in suddenly. So this is what I'm looking at all the time. Glenn and is so familiar with these instruments, constantly. they've become like an external brain. Maybe you'll feel the sensation of tumbling backwards and you'll want to push the aircraft down. This simulator is so realistic, it can trigger vertigo when you fly in fog. Bring back a little bit of power. We're flying into an Oregon airport, but for all we know, this could be Kodiak where fog can obscure dangerous mountains. Do you get this eerie kind of deep in your gut sort of worry feeling? <laughs> uh, no, you've got to maintain control and maintain your composure. Mind over matter. And that's an instrument approach. The industry puts a premium on this kind of structured training. The demand for pilots, mechanics, uh, and support personnel is through the roof. Ralph Gibbs says many of his students are recruited even before they finish school. I personally believe that flight simulation is critical to creating a better pilot sooner. Iron men flying around in wooden framed airplanes. I've often thought that the early days of aviation in Alaska was just literally that. Glenn has heard a lot of stories and is grateful for new technology. It's just something you always got to be conscious about. You know, make sure you stay within your limitations. Still, a simulator can't completely replicate the feel of flying. You know, I think that's one of the other great things about flying is you get this God's eye view when you're, you, that cannot be seen from the road. Glenn Gustafson's big dream to fly for Alaska Airlines. He's only a sophomore at UAA, but he's already been invited to take part in a Horizon Airlines training program.